Starlink is ready for beta testing and SpaceX has at last revealed pricing and speed details. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to give you a big update on Starlink. This is SpaceX's next generation low Earth orbit satellite broadband internet constellation. That is, well, they've got 800 satellites up there now already, and they're finally ready to start signing up their first real customers. Now, these are beta test customers, so this is not the final service, potentially not the final pricing, potentially not the final speeds, but we actually finally have some real details to share. So let's jump right into it. What is SpaceX selling now for Starlink? Well, the prices they've announced is the service will be $99 a month for what seems to be unlimited data. The speeds to be expected will be, they're saying for the beta period, 50 to 150 megabits per second of download speed. No specified upload speed, but probably with satellite one-tenth of the download speed would be a reasonable expectation. And then latencies, this is where Starlink is revolutionary for satellite. They're saying the latencies will be expected between 20 and 40 milliseconds, and that this is where they're starting with the beta period. And then, well, over time, this will keep getting better. So they're saying by summer 2021, presumably when the beta might be running its course, they're hoping to have latencies down to 16 to 19 milliseconds, which is incredible for satellite internet. Speeds will be faster and, well, network availability will hopefully be at that point 24-7. So they're saying beta customers should expect periods of no internet, no service as the constellation is deployed, evolved, and tested. Okay, so that's service, $99 a month. What do you need to get the service? The Starlink equipment has now also been appriced. The Starlink ground terminal receiver, um, which is primarily intended for residential rural homes, is going to be $499 for the kit. So this kit is going to have the dish that'll go on your roof. It is a robotically aimed UFO on a stick, very futuristic looking. Um, needs a big clear view of the sky, and then that will either go into a tripod that will come with the kit that you can set outside, or they will be selling for an additional $99 uh, different roof mount installation hardware. And then that will go inside to a power supply and Wi-Fi router. S installation instructions, they've actually published the manual. It's as simple as plug it in, roughly aim it at the sky, turn it on, log into your Wi-Fi network, and, well, start up the, um, they've now released Starlink iOS app that makes sure you can know how to aim the dish. Well, the dish aims itself, but it needs a very, very clear, wide open view of the sky. And the app actually has an augmented reality view that you could bring up and see. Make sure there is no trees, no branches, no buildings, no obstructions towards the northern sky because it's a huge, wide open view you need. That's going to be I think, something that makes it very challenging for uh, mobile users and anybody who wants to put this into uh, more interesting deployments. You can't shoot and aim between the trees like with satellite TV. Starlink needs wide open view of the sky. But then now well, what about mobile users? If you're um, signed up for the Starlink beta, um, is this going to be something that you can take on the road with you? Maybe not. So Starlink is very very clearly focusing on rural deployments right now, rural residential deployments. That is our initial consumer focus of Starlink. They've said mobility is important. They will support vehicles. They will support boats, all the stuff down the road. But the initial Starlink system um, is, a, the hardware is designed for kind of a fixed installation. And the software kind of assumes that you're setting a fixed location. And then, well, the service plans, the stuff that they're rolling out, the beta testers, they're inviting them by location. So they're trying to spread the beta out to very specific areas. In, focusing on the very northern half of the United States, soon the southern half of Canada, and then over the course of the next year, branching further and further south. And they seem to be wanting to have the people who sign up stay in fixed locations, so much so that the Starlink installation manual says, if you're having trouble getting connected, well, make sure you're at the location you signed up for. So that is a hint that they might actually be enforcing a geolock so that your system will only connect if you are in the location that you signed up for service. That would make Starlink not mobile friendly, not at first. So if you're hoping to take Starlink on the road, wait to get 
results from the early beta testers who try this to make sure that it is not geo-locked at first. There might be future systems that are un-geo-locked, mobile-friendly, perhaps with different pricing and different hardware. So that's the kind of Starlink taking it on the road. Not necessarily a good plan yet. But if you are in one of these rural areas where there's never been low latency fast internet before, you've got a fixed home base in the northern parts of the U.S., getting in on the Starlink beta is actually pretty exciting. There are plenty of places in the country where speeds and latencies like this are the thing of science fiction, and Starlink is making that possible. And as this rolls out to a bigger, broader audience, it gets more and more interesting, more and more spread out across the country, and uh, space internet gets kind of pretty darn cool. Now, the Starlink, this is the question we get all the time, is people think, I can finally replace my cellular plans and just get Starlink everywhere. No, we've, we've covered this many times. Starlink is going to be a great complement for cellular for people who go places where there isn't great cellular coverage. But in urban areas, in congested areas, Starlink is no different than a cell tower in the sky. And in an urban congested area or even a place where a lot of RVers happen to congregate like Quartzsite, that Starlink satellite passing overhead can end up just as congested as an overloaded cell tower. So this is not going to be the magic works everywhere all the time replacement for everything. But it is pretty amazing technology. They've been rolling it out at an incredible pace. They've got more satellites in the Starlink network than any other satellite constellation in existence, uh, including even government constellations. So Starlink is amazing technology. They've gone a long way with it. They've now got an app. They've now got hardware about to ship out to real customers. And as this beta test expands into general open available service, it's going to be a very interesting option for people's mobile and connectivity arsenals in the future. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.